All right, hello Portland. I'm Curtis Chen. I'll be your closer tonight. Uh, some of you may remember my previous Ignite talks about puzzle hunts and cat feeding robots. Tonight I want to talk about something a little different. I want to tell you about this song, The Battle Hymn of the Republic. You may not recognize the title, but you've probably heard it before. It goes a little something like this. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. <laughs> It goes on like that. So, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the history of the song. White has, White has endured mostly for 152 years. And I say mostly because the original last verse is never sung. I'll show you why in just a minute. First, these lyrics were written by Julia Ward Howe in November 1861, about seven months after the start of the Civil War. And she heard some Union soldiers singing the marching song, John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. And she was inspired to write new words to that same tune. John Brown, of course, abolitionist, Harper's Ferry, 1859, Hain for Treason. Sometime after his death, there was a man in the 2nd Infantry Battalion of the Massachusetts Militia, also named John Brown. So, of course, the other militia guys start teasing him, saying stuff like, hey, John Brown, man, I thought you were dead. What up? Dude, John Brown, when are you going to free the slaves, bro? Um, and in their copious free time, they also set these words to music. It was a campfire spiritual, glory, hallelujah. Now, if you look at the two sets of lyrics, you could argue there's an objective quality difference between them. But I think what really, what really makes Battle Hymn uh, so popular and enduring is the combination of the words and the music. This is because the brain processes the sound of music in a fundamentally different way than the sound of someone speaking. And you put the right words and the right music together, and it's like a magic spell. You light up more areas of the brain, you engage the audience more deeply. And I experienced this when I was about 10 years old, listening to a Walt Disney children's album of patriotic songs, including Battle Hymn of the Republic. It was sung by this huge men's choir, backed by a full orchestra, and it kind of blew my mind, because it's you know these five verses, they keep building and building and building, they get to the last verse, and the orchestra falls silent. And then you've got these deep, resonant male voices singing these beautiful a cappella harmonies, and they're saying this. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free while God is marching on. I mean, come on, man, it's fucking metal, man. And I'm not even Christian, I'm an atheist. But belief is irrelevant to enjoyment. That's my point here. Those words and that music, I can feel that and I can enjoy it. And that's dangerous because you can use a good song to sell a lie. We call it advertising, right? It is a black art. You get the right words and the right music together, you can convince people to buy something they don't want and they don't need. But here's the thing, you don't have to believe to have fun with something. Did Johnny Cash really shoot a man in Reno just to watch him die? No. Is Folsom Prison Blues still a great song? Yes. You can enjoy it without believing in it. And by the way, your favorite pop song might have the dumbest, dumbest lyrics in the world. I'm sorry to tell you. I mean, just think about what that person is really saying about big booties or wrecking balls or hitting babies one more time. Uh, but it's okay, you know, it's fun. It's just a song. But you can write lyrics so bad that they ruin the entire song. Julia Ward Howe did this with Battle Hymn, that original last verse, which no one ever sings. It's terrible. I'm going to show you why. Brace yourself. He is coming like the glory of the morning on the wave. He is wisdom to the mighty. He is succor to the brave. So the world shall be his footstool, and the soul of time his slave. Our God is marching on. So two issues jump out right away. First, the word sucker, which means relief or assistance, but sounds like, you idiot! And also, you're talking about God making someone his slave. But I thought we were fighting to abolish slavery. 
Yes, no, I, it's confusing, it's terrible. No one ever sings this, don't sing this. <laughs> all right, that's all the time I have. I'm Curtis Chen, if you wanna tell me how I'm wrong about any of this, here's where you can find me on the internet. Thank you for listening, good night. <laughs>